Hello and welcome to this week's Live Local and Loud with me, Kevin Gorn. On this week's show, I shall be chatting to young singer-songwriter Lydia Lutudi. And we've also been playing lots of homegrown tunes by local bands. I hope you're all well and are having a fantastic week. Let's kick this week's little show off with a bit of Aphrodite and nothing on you. Aphrodite and nothing on you. Just looking at their social media, can't see any gigs lined up, but it looks like they have been busy releasing their uh, debut EP and a few new tracks as well. So yes, great to know that they're still cracking on with stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to play some dumb language. The reason I'm going to play dumb language is because I went to a gig at the weekend at Firebug, I think it was, and the young chap uh, from dumb, La- dumb language, whose name escapes me, but I chatted to him on this very show a couple of months ago he was on the door um taking tickets um just reminded me about this song which i absolutely love so here's dumb language call you back
That was the wonderful Dumb Language and Call You Back. Great band there. Seem to be a little bit quiet on the gig front at the moment. Perhaps they're all settling in for Christmas, maybe doing a bit of recording. Who knows? Um, but now it's time for a bit of Freya Rose and Retrospect. Hey kid, I know it feels rough right now, but inside, life will come around. They tied off the lines of the line You say it'll get better sometime But the right You see I will sit in your shoes for a while Behind glossy eyes The bite So pick your, your feet up off the ground Tell me what? 
That was the wonderful Freya Rose and Retrospect. Of course, she was on this very show chatting about her album, her very latest album, um, and the launch gig, which I went to uh, a few weeks ago now down in the basement in, um, in, in, in what used to be The Cookie, is now called The Big Difference. And that was a great gig, nice and, nice and intimate gig. That was a beautiful thing. It was lovely, lovely it was. And she's a really great performer as well. Nice to see her with her band. Um, talking about bands, it's time for a bit of Gazelle now and Clementine. was the wonderful gazelle and clementine they do have a gig coming up uh they're going to be playing at the two funky music cafe here in sunny leicester um on 16th of december they're going to be playing a gig and then they're hosting the after party as well playing um with a couple of djs on there from the band playing records actual vinyl so that's great so that's uh, gazelle at the two funky music cafe here in sunny leicester near braunston gate on saturday the 16th of December. Um, it's only a fiver to get in, so cheap as chips. Okay, so now it's time for this week's little interview where I'm chatting to local singer songwriter Lydia Lou Tudi. But first of all, we shall start with her song Better. <laughs> Yeah. 
That was better by the rocking, sultry, soul stress herself, Lydia Lutudi, who is this week's special guest here on Live, Local and Loud. And she also has with her her manager, Alma Jean. Hello there, Lydia and Alma. How the devil are you today? Hello. Hello. We are great. Thank really? you. Awesome. Thank you. For, thank you very much for coming on my little show um, or here on Live Local and Loud. Like all good stories, let's start at the beginning. How did you first get into making the wonderful music you do today, Lydia? Um, well, it's um, a different path, not your average one. Um, oh. I, first of all, couldn't even hold a note until I was about 16. Um, but I do come from a family that is musical um, from the South. Uh, in North Carolina, USA. Oh, wow. Um, and always, you know, you, you go to events like church and in the family, we would always sing, but I just couldn't sing. Um, and then eventually ended up living in the UK. And um, I used to hum a lot in school. Uh, mm -hmm. My friends told me just into the school talent show, did that, started winning competitions and thought I actually had a shot at it. And um, found my way into rock music when I went to um, a Black History event that talked about the origins of um, rock and roll in the 50s and 60s. And I learned about amazing artists like Chuck Berry, Jimi mm -hmm. Hendrix, Tina Turner, Betty Davis. And that's what inspired me to, to do that because there's not a lot of representation for different faces in rock music today. Um, so it made me passionate about it. Oh, wow. That's brilliant. Yes, because the song we've just played better. That's quite a rocky little number. That's great tune. Absolutely love it. Um, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about the song and, and what makes the bridge so good in better? And what is a bridge in a song? I've heard the term, <laughs> but I'm never too sure what it is. Um, for me, the bridge is like you're coming to the conclusion of the message or the feeling or the emotion that you're feeling in the song. Uh, that song is so special to me better because um, on one hand, it sounds cocky, like I'm saying I'm better than you um, in in the chorus, but it's, it's more so about morals and character. Um, after going through experiences where I felt people walked over me. I have this background of being a people pleaser and right. wanting to, for people to like me. And then I concluded because I did the work to be a better person, you know, I'm better than you. And that's not how I think in a normal sense. It's just um, it's rock and roll. So, you know, you have to have a bit of attitude. 
<laughs> but I don't walk around telling people I'm better than you. But sometimes when you get frustrated, you know, you can feel like you need to sometimes have that moment of confidence and assurance in yourself. Like, hey, I'm better than this. I'm better than this situation. Exactly. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's more fun to say I'm better than you. Um, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. Because like you say, you, you <laughs> rise above it. Give yourself confidence to get over whatever it is you've got. So you can do better. Absolutely. Yes brilliant um yeah so i can see i can see your i can you can get your influences from it like you say rocky stuff um and then you've got the tina turner sort of soul street stuff going on there as well which is a, ni- a nice little mix y- you see yourself as trying to revive rock what's that all about yeah i just feel um for me I, there's so many different you know um explanations or feelings and meanings of what rock and roll is and i've always said my mission it was to evolve the meaning the sound the image of it um because i feel rock and roll was a product of uh political um you know moments political ideologies as well um and it was a response to that and rock and roll was such an important tool to end or to help influence, um, you know, race relations, uh, things around gender, equality. It just brought people together. Mm. Um, But I feel it never got to finish what it was working on, what it was doing. Um, I even watched like the Elvis film last year and I love how he as protest kept performing and it brought people together. So um, I feel rock and roll is more than just you know the cliche things that people say like oh it's just being reckless it's it's responding and to society to make it better um and that's why i'm i'm passionate about it and i do struggle to pick one genre cuz i'm inspired by so much i love motown i love folk i love indie i love soul um but rock and roll resonated the most to me because of you know i even have a background in working for the council and things like that so i've always been political but I'm an artist as well. So I thought rock would be the best way to marry my all my backgrounds into one. Brilliant. Sounds awesome. Okay. But as long as, the, as well as the rock side, we've also got the more soul street stuff as well, which we're going to hear a bit more in your next song, As Long As I See You, which is also your debut single, which was yeah. released last year, um, Lydia. Now, but last time I spoke to you was about 10 years ago on this very show. So what have you been doing in the last nine years until you released your debut single? Oh, I have been developing as a person Um, and also just going through, you know, life stuff um, and, you know, trying to figure out what is it I'm trying to communicate. I remember when I met you those many years ago, I definitely wasn't on this path of wanting to do rock music. I knew I wanted to do music, um, but I was just starting. Cause again, I was kind of a late bloomer in terms of still developing my voice, my sound, getting experience working with live musicians. And also I have an interest in other things as a creative. I'm into painting and I spent some time doing my own events. So um, sometimes it's hard for me to land my feet in one place. But now um, I'm I'm, I'm much more confident as a human being in who I am. Um, And I think I needed that time to to grow. So I knew this is what I want to do because committing to anything, especially in the arts, it's not always easy because you have to prepare yourself for criticism and failure. And yeah, I had to 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 grow. Did lockdown have anything to do? Because you released it probably just after lockdown, I suppose, didn't you, in 2022? Yeah, lockdown um, did come at such an inconvenient time for everyone, I feel, um, or else it would have been out, I, I think, a lot sooner. But it was... I was just glad that I was able to um, film the music video for it as well. And I just decided, let's just put it out. You know, let's not wait any longer and, and see what happens. Absolutely. I was going to talk to you about that that, that uh, video as well. It's incredible. It looks, uh, I <laughs> urge everybody who's listening to this to go and watch the music video for as long as I see you. It's incredible. It's a fantastic thing. Um, it's quite <laughs> funny, but really plush, nicely done. And uh, love the car as well. I was going to oh, say. My favorite part. <laughs> absolutely. 
<laughs> that must have taken, uh, well, it must have been very expensive to make. It was and it wasn't. Um, I think at the time as well, because I I was self-funded, like I just tried to be as resourceful as possible. I even had to take horse riding lessons wow. for um, a few weeks so I could, you know, do the horse scene. Um, but thankfully, with the community around me, um, I was able to get support or get, you know, a little discount here and there. And the car was absolutely free from Ooh, the amazing Richard. Who Is that because it wasn't working? Is it free because it wasn't working? <laughs> I wish that was the case. <laughs> well, it broke down, <laughs> didn't it, in the video? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was in perfect order, perfect right. order. Um, and that's Just, like one of the most expensive cars in the UK and authentically vintage. So wow. um, to be able to drive that was such an honor. God, until it broke down. Yes, until it broke down, so I had to steal a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. No, that looks superb. Um, brilliant. Oh, well, what well, seeing as we're chatting about it, uh, we might yeah, let's play it. So um, but can you just briefly tell us how did the inspiration come to you for the song, As Long As I See You? Yeah, so this track was inspired by um the feelings that you have for someone that you want to see and doing whatever it takes, whether it's stealing a horse or, um, you know, anything crazy, doing something crazy to see the person you want to see because life's short. Just Couldn't not, don't more. be a stalker, that's all. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. So here's <laughs> As Long As I See You by Lydia Latudi.
That was As Long As I See You by the rocking, sultry, soul stress herself, Lydia Lutudi, who's this week's special guest here on Live Local and Loud, also with her manager, Alma Jean. So, Alma, if I can bring you into the conversation a little bit, um, how long have you been managing Lydia for? Um, Well, pretty much since I was born. Since you were born, (laughs) crikey. Yeah, she's my older sister. So, yeah. Oh, all oh, right, nice. Gosh, so you've been managing us literally since it came out, even before she was a musician. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Are you like the bossy one then? Uh, no, it's the other way round. Actually, <laughs> I get you know abused, but you know. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what all we right, do. Then. Siblings, it comes with it. <laughs> so what's 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 Lydia like to manage? What what sort of things do you get up to then as a manager? Because I used to manage a band, so. What sort of things do you get? Do you set targets or how does how does it work? What do you get up to? Well, uh, first of all, we try to help each other, you know, wake up early because uh-huh. to be successful, you know, you got to wake up early. That's it. Good start. Work out, yoga. And then, yeah, I always tell her, let's finish the music because, you know, I know music can be stressful to make. It can it can happen more faster. We can get this music done. Absolutely. So I just, I just, my job is just to push her. Do do you monitor her progress at all? Uh, yes, I do. I do. I just check if um, certain things are finished, like her song. I just check how is all going. Okay. And if and do, her beats are updated or not. Okay. And do you? I don't know. Do you do things like monitor, see if she's getting more views or more likes or less views or or you know. Anything like that? Oh, yeah. uh, That's where social media comes into play. Uh So I tell her to like uh, make some reels and show more of her personality because she doesn't like social media. Talk about social media. You've got your your little um, vlog thing up, haven't you? Uh, What was it called? I saw on your Facebook page. Oh, is that Lydia and Alma, the joint page, you mean? Journey to Lutudi. 2D. Yes, that's me. (laughs) (laughs) What's that? That looked quite amusing. I like that. You seem quite natural. I love the humour in it. It's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. So is that what? What's that? Space? Is that like a monthly sort of diary of what's going on in your in your life as a singer? That's something I'm still developing, and that's that's actually a conversation that me and Alma will have after this. Um, how I'm I'm choosing to connect with people socially because I do really struggle to translate you know, the journey that I'm going through as a musician online. Um, And it's, you know, little little things that you forget to capture moments that people would probably want to see. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, I'm showcasing the journey to get to Latuti. And Latuti is like this rock star Lydia that, you know, I'm aiming to be. But the journey, I think, would be nice to to show in real time. So people can appreciate it more. So, for example, you you played Glastonbury, didn't you, last year? Did you document that? Um, yeah, so that was uh, this summer. It's actually me and Alma. We played it together oh. as backing vocalist for uh, a band called Future Shape of Sound. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Wow. Yeah, that sounds good. How did you get that gig? Um, oh, long story short, I have a connection with the the lead singer, Um who uh, named Tommy Ray Brown, um, who's also like a mentor for me. So um, mm. she invited us to to come in and sing. Cool, that's pretty good. So you've documented that. Are you going to put that in your journey to Lutudi then? Yeah, definitely. And what was it like performing to? Presumably you had a big crowd there at Glastonbury. It was uh, so surreal. Like whenever I get on stage, I usually have to ask a lot of questions when I get off because I don't remember a lot. I'm so in the moment um, Mm. and taking everything in and it's exciting. And, you know, I'm not a a shy performer either. I'm very much in your face and I move a lot. So it's like a a meditation, (laughs) Mm. but just, just really fun to feel the energy, to be on stage. I remember we did two different sets and it was at, I think one was like nine o'clock at night and the other was like, 5 a.m. in the morning Mm, not the next Um, morning the next morning you don't really get sleep in between so um yeah it was it was real rock and roll did you stay for the whole weekend at Glastonbury no didn't stay the whole weekend um because we actually had other things to get up to but um 
it was just a great experience. Well, yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Okay, brilliant. Um, so yeah, now you've got your new debut A L E P in the works. Have you? Would you like to tell us about that? Yes. So this EP is called Psychedelic Millennial. Um, and the tracks will tell a story of my perspective as a millennial into psychedelic music and art. Um, and my aim is to do what Nina Simone says, which is reflect the times that I'm living in. Um, and it will include tracks like Better um, and also just show my evolution as an artist. Um, Cause like the stuff that people will hear today is a bit of, um, you know, kind of pop rock, but mm. this will showcase a more hard rock. And also this EP will be a tool to help me pursue my goals, which is to play live shows. Absolutely. Speaking of live shows, um, will you be doing lots of live shows next year? Yes. 2024 is the, the year people can see me live. My friends are getting impatient <laughs> on when I'm going to finally announce, you know, regular dates. But that's that's the goal. Get the music done and um, play it, play it as much as I can. Excellent. Because, yeah, over the years, I have seen you pop up every once in a while. I remember I saw you at the I think it was a Cosmopolitan Festival in oh, 2017 yes. or something. Yeah, you've been popping up every now and then, haven't you? But next year it's going to be serious, is it? And I'm assuming I've seen some photographs and stuff of you hanging around the music cafe. Is that like where most of your musical stuff happens? Um, well, I've had ties there, you know, throughout the years. Um, you know, Lester has a few hubs and and organizations that support artists. And this year I, I have so many demos that I've, you know, sat on, um, but never had the the right people or time opportunity to develop them. So I applied for Project Live and finished up three tracks there with wow. an amazing band and um, director Lisa Millet, who's been a great support. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to do that. And two of those tracks will be on my EP as well. Um, and I got to showcase them this year, which was a lot of fun. All as part of Project Live. Yes. And that's is, is that a, um, a too funky type thing or is it a government thing? Yeah, that's a too funky project that they put on, I believe, every quarter. They've got another show coming up in December that I'll be going to to support Leicester artists. Um, but yeah, the main aim is just to help develop artists play live and also learn how to write and work with a band, which is important for me because I'm uh, along with, you know, singing and songwriting. I'm also producing my EP um, as well um i'll have support with another producer that i'm working with but i also think it's important that my production ideas are heard and showcased and i really got to do that a lot with project live yeah it sounds like there's a load of creative too funky are doing a load of creative stuff aren't they They're really helping uh, musicians in the area okay um good so um we're gonna we're gonna have to wrap up shortly but before we do we're gonna play your latest single find your way um but before we chat about that can you just tell us how people can follow you on social media what's your handles Yes, you can follow me at Lydia Lutudi, L-Y-D-I-A-L-U-T-U-D-I. Um, Instagram is probably where I'm most active. Um, and the website is loading, LydiaLutudi.com. But for now, Instagram, Facebook. And so we're going to play your single, Find Your Way. Can you tell us how did the inspiration happen to the, happen for this? Because the, the world is in a lot of pain. Um, you know, pandemics was a big theme over the past few years, but I think there's a pandemic of loneliness, depression, isolation. Um, and, you know, I just feel there's a the la a lack of smiling. Mm. Um, and I'm guilty of it myself. And um, my little brother is an inspiration for this song because he's always smiling. And I always, like, me and my sisters will always say to him, you're always smiling. Like, he'll smile about any and everything. <laughs> so um, I wrote this song as, like, a message to our inner child to to smile as it says in the chorus brilliant are you going to do a nice music video for it as well i would love to i would love to this is a song that i feel will be with me my whole career all right then lydia well thank you very much for chatting with me and yourself alma keep up the managing and i very much look forward to seeing you perform next year that'll be great i look forward to that 
Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, here's her latest single. So here's Find Your Way by Lydia Lutudi. was me chatting to the wonderful Lydia Lutudi and her manager Ress Alma Jean. So that was great fun catching up with them. Brilliant stuff. Okay, so now for our final track on this week's little show, we're going to play a track from, uh, I think it was last week I spoke to him, Stevie Jones and the Wildfires and Clarity in Dusk. So tired of feeling so low again Can't seem to find my way through the day Full of self-doubt and my whole body aches Need to cut through the struggles I face World of corruption, anger Short term thinking gets shorter each day. Narcissism replacing rational thought. Instincts are gone, 
We all can be bought And out above Echoes the word Pheasants is stuck As I walk through Embracing silence In nature I trust Here I will find chat that we had uh, during our interview where we're ch- chatting about walking through the woods at dusk and what a special feeling that is so yeah beautiful song there that was stevie jones and the wildfires clarity in dusk that brings us to the end of another live local and loud with me kevin gaunt i hope you enjoyed the show Don't forget, if you want to see what gigs are going down in The Hood, then check out our handy gig guide in www.musicinleicester.co.uk. Also, if you want to listen to any previous live, local and louds and the interviews therein, or perhaps you want to listen to this show again because you might have just caught the end of it or something like that, you'll find a handy playlist with all the shows in on musicandleicester.co.uk. It's right there on the front page on the right. So do have a great week and I shall see you here, Hermitage FM, next Thursday at 5 o'clock.